Let's talk about the New York baseball Mets. <sighs> last I recorded was uh, what last Monday, and then of course Edwin Diaz Sugar tears his patellar tendon, celebrating a win for Team Puerto Rico in the World Baseball Classic, leading many to say, "Why?" <laughs> Myself included. Uh, he's out for the season and probably the playoffs. Although he said that he's gonna, he's intends to or aim for his goal is to return, you know, at the end of the season, at some point in the season, or at least in the playoffs. I just, I just don't think it's going to happen. I'm like 99% sure that torn patellar tendon is what happened to Victor Cruz in 2014. And he was never the same when he came back. I think most people are just never the same after a torn patellar tendon. So that's pretty much the end of (laughs) Edwin Diaz's run as the Mets closer. I think when he comes back, it's going to be like, maybe he, you know, I don't know that you, we'll see. I mean, I think with modern science, this is the second week in a row I've done a Bobby, (laughs) Ricky Bobby quote. I, I I like to think with modern science being the way it is. That can't live to be 100, 200 years old. So, uh, I mean, who knows? The the scientific advancements, medical advancements that have gone on, technology being the way it is. Maybe Edwin Diaz is able to pull off a miracle, but what the fuck, man? God damn it. It sucks. He was the best closer in all baseball last year. And for it to lose him in what many call a meaningless competition. And I, I remember, I definitely said that when I first news broke. I mean, you think back to when the Mets lost JJ puts puts in the world baseball classic in 2009, something like that. And that kicked off one hell of a, it seems like every time there's a world baseball classic, the Mets get screwed. <laughs> 2009, 2013, 2017, right? Was it 2017? I don't know. I, I mean, I, I I understand. Like, I didn't watch any of the World Baseball Classic this year. I tuned into the Japan-Mexico semifinal last night. It was pretty entertaining. Randy Arazarina, Azar Arazarina had like a ridiculous catch to save a home run to rob a home run and then had another ridiculous catch and threw the ball in the stands. And I, I eventually turned it off because I I was going to go to bed. Mexico was up and apparently Japan came back and now Japan's winning three, one in the middle, uh, heading into the bottom of the seventh over USA, USA. I saw someone else had a concussion and broken ribs. Uh, I forget what player it was. There was another player that got hurt. So it's just like, I don't know. Players get hurt. It's just the way he got hurt that sucks, like celebrating. Ugh. It wasn't even like a line drive off the temple or like, you know, he was diving for a ball off the mound or he tripped off the mound or he had awkward whatever off the mound during play. It was like, this is freaking celebration. But that's just how the Mets, (laughs) Mets, you know, I guess you could say LOL Mets. Like the Mets have, in terms of injuries, the Mets have had some real doozies over the course of their history. So do I, I don't think the season's over. And I, I, I to be honest, I'm, I don't want to say I'm happy, but I, if you were to say, Hey, would you rather have all this bullshit happen in March or would you rather have it happen in September? What are you going to pick? I pick March because September, it seemed like everyone was falling apart. <laughs> we were going limping into the playoffs. I would rather take the road of the Phillies last year. We're like, all right, sure. We don't look great for the first uh, however months, first however many months of the season, four months of the season. Like just hang in there for the first half, right? Don't let the deficit get too mu- too big. Make sure it stays within a week's worth of games. Like you don't want to get 10 games back. That's bad. But if you keep it below 10 games back for the majority of the season, and make your move. It's like fucking NASCAR, dude. Like you're you're just kind of you're hanging back and you're just kind of coasting and drafting other dudes and just casually moving up. And then make your move. Slingshot, motherfucker. Wow, a lot of Ricky Bobby going on in Mets talk. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I I I I put out a tweet because <clears throat> I you know, and this I'm I'm gonna show my age. You know, I'm 42. I'm old and. 
Um, it, I was kind of in the camp of, yeah, the, the World Baseball Classic is meaningless. I don't know that I get that amped or excited about it. Um, and what I am failing to understand is these guys are professional baseball players. A lot of the uh, professional baseball players have mega contracts with their major league baseball teams. Edwin Diaz just signed a four-year, $150 million contract, something like that, which is uh, the largest for a relief pitcher in Major League Baseball history, or it's the highest for a closer, something like that. And if his team, Puerto Rico, wins the World Baseball Classic, which they won't, he gets like a $50,000 payout. I just don't think that, I I just don't think that's worth it. I just, uh, I don't know. Like I applauded Brandon Nimmo because he just signed a big contract. And I think that probably influenced him not to play because he just signed a big contract and it's a lot of money. It's his first mega contract. And so he wants to make sure that he's doing everything to live up to that contract because it's year one. I assume if it was year three or four in the deal, he might contemplate it, but it's, it's, he didn't even play year one yet. So like he's entering year one. So he's like, wow, more money, more pressure. I got to live up to the pressure. I don't want to risk anything because the team has invested so much in me. Edwin Diaz was just like, no, I'm, I'm playing because of his pride for his country. I get it. These guys have pride for the countries and they want to do good by their country. <sighs> It doesn't make it any easier to swallow. Like I saw, was it athlete logos? He makes the neons for the Mets and now he's doing it for like pretty much all New York sports and all sports in general. And a great account to follow. He creates great art. And he's just, and he's just saying, if, if you're basically, I'm paraphrasing, but if your first reaction isn't to, for the welfare or the well being of Edwin Diaz, you're, you're like an asshole or a jerk or whatever. It's just like, obviously I want him to do to get what get well and get healthy but at the same time like avoidable right it just feels like it was avoidable and secondly he didn't die okay it's a ter- torn patella tendon i mean he's he, they're not gonna have to cut a limb they're not gonna amputate like <laughs> he's gonna survive and will he i don't know what i mean i mean insurance i heard i saw insurance is gonna kick in and gonna cover a lot of that which is great and you know, Stevie, Uncle Stevie, Steve Cohen has committed a lot of resources and time and money and effort to make sure that we're, that he's doing everything in his power, you know, using the team's resources to make sure that Edwin is getting all the help that he can to recover and rehabilitate, which is great. I mean, like just another example of why Steve Cohen is such a great owner. So, you know, I, I hope he recovers. It's just like a fucking avoidable dude. But do I think we're going to miss the playoffs because of it? No. Do I think we're going to win 100 games this year? Probably not. But am I cool with winning 90 or like 87, 88 and squeaking into the playoffs and then causing some havoc from there from that point on? I, I kind of want to do that. <laughs> I kind of want to go that route instead of like what we went through last year where we're, we're like we win 100 games and it's and it feels like we squeaked in when it's like we didn't squeak in we 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 just barely lost a division because of uh a couple slip-ups in september so it's it sucks and i I think a lot of people were depressed and was like this is just feels like what this is what it's like to be a mets fan and it's gonna there are gonna be multiple occasions this year where we're gonna be like we would have won the game if we had a woman ds which is crazy to think when we go back to time travel, back to 2019, when I first started this podcast, and we're like, Edwin Diaz is literally losing us a handful of games. <laughs> and now he's losing us a handful of games again, but this time by not pitching. So, you know, I, I, I honestly think that we're still going to the playoffs. I honestly think that we can, we can still do enough to make the playoffs and make a run. Sure, it's not looking great at the beginning of the season, but it's freaking March, dude. It's such a long season. 162 games so much can happen i mean you, you know even though I, you haven't seen a lot of activity or motion in terms of uh, the market right now that's going to change come trade deadline i mean if we don't do anything at the trade deadline i would be i will be fucking flabbergasted out my ass dude 
Like they we're going to do stuff at the trade deadline. We just got to remain hang in there and remain competitive through that point. So Anthony Giacomo wrote up a article, four options for the Mets to fill a Diaz sized hole in the bullpen. Obviously right now, David Robertson is the closer. You know, I'm not too crazy about him. I liked him more as an eighth inning setup guy, but now he's our closer. So, uh, you know, just cross your fingers and, Hold on to your butts, Samuel L. Jackson style in, J- in Jay Park. Adam Montavino, Drew Smith, Brooks Raley, those are the guys that are going to have to step up in that uh, six, seven, eight position. If Adovino can do what he did for the majority of, I mean, he had a great season last season. If he can just repeat that, that would be awesome. Drew Smith uh, missed some time last year. There were times where it looked like he could be an eighth inning setup guy. And then there were other times where he just got lit up. So it's like, who are you going to get? It seems like he's Mr. Inconsistent. And then Brooks Raley, I don't I don't know that he even, I don't know too much about him. I don't know too much about him. But what 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 a pleasant surprise that would be if he came out and he was on the level of, of Otto Bino. And good Drew Smith, not bad Drew Smith. So there were some speculation about like, all right, who do we go out and get? Do we get, do we go out and get someone? And I guess the front runner there is Zach Britton. Um, I didn't follow the Orioles too closely when Buck was manager, but apparently there was some kind of incident with Zach Britton and Buck Showalter and the Orioles. So it seems like that might not be a consideration. And then there were some other available relievers that he listed. Corey Kniebel, Archie Bradley, Mike Miner, Ken Giles. Man, I, I, all I know is Corey Kniebel is probably a no for me dog. So, yeah. Whoa, boy. I mean, if we do miss the playoffs, though, and it is the bullpen that collapses, specifically our closer. Yeah, you can pinpoint right to this moment when he celebrated what would many would consider outside of Puerto Rico a meaningless win. <laughs> um, and all that money, dude. I know I'm just some fat, bald, divorcee, Debbie dad, but some, if I sign a contract that says, hey, we're going to pay you $150 million, It's like, that's my life. Like, that's all I'm doing. I'm just focusing on, okay, how can I be my, how can I be worth $150 million for this team that believes so much in me? Oh, hey, Neil, do you want to go to this beer pong tournament where you can, if we win, you can get $50,000? I mean, I know you have $150 million coming your way, but what about $50,000? And you have the pride of playing for your country. That's right. You're playing for the United States of America in the beer pong tournament. You in? Like, dude, I love my country, but come on. Ugh. Yeah, and I just watched a clip from, because I've been, I, I pretty much agreed with KFC with Barstool Sports. He he just went off. I I, met, I saw, I, I listened to, and I watched the emergency pod from We Gotta Believe which is the Mets podcast from Barstool Sports. And he went off then. He went off in a one-minute man, which is his uh, you know series franchise that he does where he rants about trending news and stuff like that and sports and entertainment. He made good points then. He then went on Barstool Rundown and made more good points. Like, sure, the ratings might be through the roof in Japan or in other countries, in other areas, but what are the ratings like in the United States? Well... March Madness got 10 times the ratings that the WBC got. I just, I don't know. I it, It's tough for me to embrace it. And maybe because it's just still fresh and new. Like it's only, you know, I was almost 30. I was uh, basically tw- almost 29 when the first one was. Because I think the first one was 09. I could be completely wrong about that. I mean, I'm not a fucking geek when it comes to baseball. Sorry. So maybe because it's new to me. But I guess if you were, if you were nine when the first world baseball classic happened, like that's your jam. Okay, cool. Uh, you know, I don't want to knock, I'm not knocking anyone for following it and liking it and appreciating it, but it just, you have to realize your position on the totem pole, <laughs> like world baseball classic versus world series championship. <laughs> Long suffering franchise that only got, there's only one, one. And hasn't come and came close to winning one like once since 86. Like, come on. 
versus the World Baseball Classic, which happens every, I don't even know, four years. And if the USA wins, that's great. I, don't, I just don't like bragging rights, I guess. I just, you know, I understand for some countries that that's, that is their World Series. But for like Trey Turner has been going off in the WBC, which is great. But wouldn't it be funny if he just starts off the fucking year like 0 for 30? And I wondered this about um, pitchers too, because I don't know that there's, there's, I don't think there's a pitch clock in the WBC. So these pitchers are going to be going there, no pitch clock, and then they have to start the season with a pitch clock. Like, is that going to, how is that going to impact them and affect them? I don't know. But Pete Alonzo and Jeff McNeil are also on the roster for USA. And I haven't seen, I haven't really seen them play in the WBC that much. Just hoping that they don't get hurt because if both of them get hurt, it's like, <laughs> oh boy. Then you can maybe probably console the season. So yeah, that's the, that's the, uh, that's, uh, that's my take on the WBC. I just, to me, if you are a bench, like it shouldn't, if you're a bench player on a pro team and this is your chance to start and play, great, have fun. If you are a friggin' stud player with a huge contract, why would you sacrifice it for this? You know, it, it, it harkens back to Jason Seahorn. And this is football again. Sorry, I'm a football guy. But like Jason Seahorn with the Giants coming off a great season in 97, underrated cornerback who's gaining national attention decides to return kickoffs in the preseason in 98. And on the first return in a game he's ever had, NFL game, he tears like the ACL, the ASA, whatever. He tears like a bunch of ligaments, and he was never really the same after that. And I tracked down the article, and it was like, yeah, he like, the players didn't want him to do it. Seahorn was adamant trying to get Fossil Jim Fossil, the head coach of the Giants, to get him to re- to return, to allow him to return kicks. Fossil was against it and against it and against it, and it finally caved in, and you lost you lost your top corner for the '98 season, and he wasn't the same coming back in '99, 2000. So I don't know. Accidents happen. Shit happens. That's li- That's life. But <sighs> yeah, I don't think we're gonna win 100 games this year. <laughs> But I'm happy with 90. You know, what was his war last year? Edwin Diaz. War. War. I don't know if they showed his war. There we go. His war was 3.2. So we were at 100 and whatever wins last year. One. Right there, you knock us down to 98. I think you just got to win 90, to be honest, the way things are set up nowadays. You know, I just, I mean, the Phillies won what, 89 last year? 87 wins last year. Fucking A. That hurts looking at that. 87 wins. The Brewers had one last win and didn't make the playoffs. (laughs) That drives me nuts. And considering like all the Mets teams from like the 80s and late 80s, early 90s were, or well, most of the 80s where it's like they're winning like 100 plus games and they miss the playoffs because that's stupid format. <clears throat> so I, you know, if we could win 87 again in the playoffs, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm like, we were so tense over the course of what was an incredible season in 2022. We were just, we couldn't enjoy it. Couldn't enjoy it at all. That this year, it's like, let's play the other side of the corn coin. Let's play the other card where it's like, let's just kind of like, if we lose games here or there, it's okay. Let's just win enough games, you know? Just be in contention. Um, the other Mets news, Jose Quintana, who I, I guess I kind of made light of this, you know, and why wouldn't I considering the last time we heard soreness in his side, it was Jacob deGrom and it was like, okay, here we go again. And I guess with Quintana, it was a benign tumor. Am I making that up? 
I'm pretty sure that's what it was. He's going to undergo surgery after a lesion was found on his ribs and will be out until July. So, yeah, it's a blow to the starting rotation. You know, I think the allure for me with Quintana is that he's going to give you innings. He's going to eat innings and he's going to give us, he's not going to be like a lights out type of pitcher, but that he'll give you enough quality starts, enough innings. You know, he's going to give you 30 starts and he's going to give you six innings per start or something like that. And he's a lefty, which I love, but now he's out to July. So what are their, what are the options here? Thank God we have David Peterson and Tyler McGill. Both are 27. Peterson's obviously the lefty. McGill's the righty. And Peterson has 43 career starts, 4.38 ERA. McGill, 27 starts, 4.67 ERA. And both of them, I would say Peterson's having the better spring this year. I don't know how up to date these numbers are, but he's... He's, he's thrown well. He's thrown better than McGill, I'll say that. So I guess you roll with Peterson to start with, and then you have McGill kind of in the wings uh, spot starting here or there. So I have con- I have confidence in both those guys. Peterson probably more than McGill. So I would go with Peterson there. So that's the Mets.